Okay, hey everybody, welcome to our Tuesday virtual group. Um, we will be talking about behavior strategies for meal planning today, which is a little bit different than I think was originally sent out to you guys. So I apologize if you were expecting something different. Take a look at all the information on the screen as well as the handouts listed in the bottom where you can get the handouts to our class. We're getting ready to get started. Um, be thinking about any questions that you may have and you can tap them in the chat box anytime and we will, um, I'll get to them when we can. So let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So yeah, so we're gonna be talking about um, behavior strategies related to meal planning. I'm gonna try and get the webcam up started here in just a second. I think you guys should be able to see me now. Um, okay, so so welcome to the group. So meal planning is going to be a huge part of your plan in regards to being able to stay on track um, and maintenance. So we're going to be talking a little bit about food today. So if you're currently on a full meal replacement plan, if you're doing the OptiFast program, bear with us and think about how you can use this to help you stay prepared, but also how you can use this moving forward, okay? So let me start. What are you gonna learn today? We're gonna learn the three P's of meal planning, some helpful tips, what happens if we don't plan, what if planning is not something that um, is necessarily a strength for you, and how do we get started with this, and the importance of logging, okay? So the three P's of meal planning, the first one is going to be to plan, purchase, and prepare, okay? So plan, purchase, and prepare. I've got a handout here on, on the screen that you can see about if we don't plan, how are we going to know what to do? So we've got to be able to use something like this. And this, we have um, hard copies of this that you can definitely get. We can probably add to the handouts too. Um, Josh, is that something I know that you're probably listening in? If you are, let me know if that's something we could add to the handout link as well. Um, and we can do that for you guys. So when you look at this, you see the three P's, the plan, the purchase, and the prep. And on here, I have listed all seven days of the week and five to six eating episodes, depending on each person's individual plan. And then, okay, once we decide what we've planned, now we've got to make our list so we can figure out what to purchase. And then from there, what can I prep to stay ahead of the game? What can I prep to be able to set me up for the most success? So that's what I want you to think about when you're seeing um, this particular sheet, okay? Okay, what days do I have time to cook when I get home from work? I know that on Tuesdays we get home and we have an after kind of work after school activity at 630. So that's a day that I know I very likely may want leftovers or to have something in the crock pot, but not something that I'm necessarily going to have time to get home and prep and cook and prepare a meal, right? Like I said, what days would crock pot meals work best? What day am I going to need leftovers? What are snacks that are going to be easy for me to grab on busier days? So let's say you know you have, um, let's say you know you have a very important meeting on Wednesday that's going to take like a large portion of your day, and you're going to have an eating episode there. Well, you're probably not going to have time to go to the refrigerator and get out your yogurt and and mix that with some slivered almonds or whatever it is that you have. So what snack, what bar can you put in your purse or or your bag or carry in your pocket? that you're going to be able to pull out that meeting or step outside quickly um, and eat that in the meeting. So what are some easy things that you need on days that may be busier? Who in my family can help me? Um, I don't know if you all have children or spouses that enjoy cooking. My son absolutely loves being in the kitchen and he loves to help me meal prep and portion out almonds and things like that into the black bag. So he really finds enjoyment of that. So spend a couple hours on Sunday, right? Have it as a family thing to be able to put some, some attention into the things that you've planned for, you've purchased for, and now that you're prepping. So like I said, do it ahead of time. What can you do to make each step easier? 
So let's say you have something that you are going to have time to cook when you get home from work on Thursday. But maybe Wednesday night, you could go ahead and cut up some of the vegetables. You could go ahead and prep some of the items. Um, so that way, there's less to do. And the less we have to do at the moment when we're hungry, the better chances are for us to be able to stay on plan and follow through with what we've planned to do, okay? If you have done something like last week that was really helpful, that you found to be extremely successful, let's duplicate it. What's well, worked well before is very likely going to work well again. Okay, so now that's the planning. We've planned ahead. Now let's talk about the purchase, okay? So we have a plan. Now we have to buy what we need. We have to make the grocery list, okay? Go to the store. If you're going to go physically into the store, a tip is to go after an eating episode and take a water with you. Another trick is to do online shopping. Has anybody ever used online shopping before? Yes, I agree. It is great. <laughs> um, I listed down the, um, the people or the places here that I know that do online shopping. Um, Lowe's, Harris Teeter, and Walmart. I have used Harris Teeter before. And now I typically use the Walmart online grocery. And I can talk about it for a really long time, about all the things that I love about it. Because, oh, on Amazon Prime, that's another great one. Thank you. Um, because I can keep a running list of my phone in the app. Um, my husband can log in and add something to the list. It helps me not buy things that I did not plan to buy. And it helps me stay on track from a financial standpoint as well, which I think is a big plus. Okay. You can get everything in one trip, whether it's online or going into the store, so that way you're not triggered by unhealthy foods all the time. So if you're trying to think about buy the stuff and prep a meal all in the same afternoon after work or same evening, those are a lot of different steps where we could have mishaps that set us up to be off plan. Okay. Okay, now we're going to talk about the preparing part. Um, what can you do on the weekend or a time I have free? Has anybody ever batch cooked food or meal prepped ahead of time? Yeah, awesome. So yeah, so here are some tips that I think can be really helpful. So think about what is a specific time that I can do this. Um, invite other people to help you. We talked about that a little bit, inviting your spouse or your kid or whomever to be able to help you. I even one time um, called my mom and dad and said, hey, I'm going to be doing all these like freezer crock pot meals where we take some recipes, double them, get some bags, assemble them all together. You guys want to go in and do some with me. And they loved the idea. They did some for them and also for a friend that had just um, had some surgery. So so we went to their house, got together. It took us about maybe an hour, hour and a half um, to, to assemble everything, and it was fun. And we each ended up, I think, living, leaving with five freezer meals that we put in our freezer, and we ate over the next couple weeks. Um, so that was really fun to be able to do something different to help set us up for success. So ways to prepare. Pre-portion your snacks. Boil and peel your eggs. Go ahead and cut up your produce. Um, if you're loading the grill up on Sunday evenings or Saturday evenings for, for supper, go ahead and throw extra lean protein on it. So that way you're able to have extras and can go about the rest of your week and be able to have things that are already cooked and prepped. Um, cook more needed vegetables for the same reason. And then the lastly, the thing on here is what we talked about, is being able to use um, the freezer bag and freeze until used. Has anybody ever done any kind of that, the freezer crock pot meals or, or any kind of freezer meals for prep before? A lot in the winter, yeah. I was just thinking today, now with school starting, for those of you who may have children, um, activities and things are getting ready to kind of gear up again, <laughs> kind of back in that routine, right? And I was just thinking I need to go ahead and think about some that I need to go ahead and cook 
um, or I'm sorry, not cook, but go ahead and prep and put in the freezer bag some freeze so that way we have quick, um, healthy go-to recipes. Yeah, it is a good concept. So basically, the whole idea, and we may get to this later, but is taking the recipe and putting everything that you need for the crock pot recipe. So instead of dumping it straight into the crock pot raw, what you're going to do is you're going to put it all in a Ziploc bag, a gallon freezer Ziploc bag, and then put all the ingredients in there, flatten it out, get the air out, and freeze it. Um, and then before, let's say you want to have it on a Thursday. Sometime Wednesday, you're going to take it out of the freezer, put it in the fridge, um, and then from there be able to put it straight into the crock pot the morning that you need it. So it's a, it's a really good idea that I think is really helpful. Okay, some other helpful tips. What other tips do you guys have before I pull mine up of ways that you plan ahead or um, prep? Anything like that that you find that helps you stay on plan, whether it's with a shake or whether it's with um, food eating episodes. What are your tips? Anybody have any? That's perfect. Carrying extra shakes with you. Extra bars. Mm -hmm. Keeping some in the car and in the office. Yes, I like this. So where are you at most often? Are you going to have some in your desk? Before starting OptiFast, I used to keep 100 calorie packs of almonds with me. Yes, that's perfect. Um, being able to think about what is something that's not going to require refrigeration that I can keep in my desk drawer, keep in my purse, my glove compartment, things like that. Um, if you do have um, a fridge at work, we, you know, we have a big um, fridge where we can kind of put our stuff for the week or for the day. And I've seen people bring in um, a Tupperware container of several boiled eggs that's not for the same day but for over the week. Or they bring in certain um, shakes that they want to keep really, really cold. And they go ahead and bring a big thing of water. Um, so all of those ideas are, are really, really helpful. Let's see what I listed. Um, consider supper swaps. So this is kind of what I talked about a little bit ago with my parents and the things that we met together and we did some swapping. But you wouldn't even have to meet together to do it. If you have a friend that wants to do the freezer um, crockpot meals, have her make a couple recipes and double them. And you make a couple recipes and double them. And then you can trade. So then you end up making it, and it's less cleanup because you're using the same ingredients, but then you swap and end up having more meals. Purchase produce that is already cut up. Um, this was a tip that one of the dietitians gave me when I did this topic the last time. And I love this idea, and especially, see, I think she said Lowe's possibly, was the place where you can go and get your produce, and they'll cut it up for you right there. You will pay a little bit extra, but being able to have that already done and have one step closer to it being on your plate can be really helpful. By prepackaged and portion controlled items, we've touched on that a little bit with the 100 calorie packs of almonds and other things. Um, anything else that you guys buy prepackaged? Oh, yeah, the P3 packs. That's great. Got lots of protein, some fats in there. That's another really awesome one. Some salads and fruits. Yep, cheese sticks. That's a great idea. Pre-made salads. Y'all are eating a lot of salads. <laughs> Good. Yeah, those are great. Um, that goes ahead and gives you the portion that you know that you're getting. You have the cal calorie information and the protein, all of that already on that package. The careful thing that I would do here is make sure that you're reading the labels because sometimes what may look like one serving is really going to be two. So you may think, okay, yeah, this, is, this looks good. I'm getting you know 200 calories and 20 grams of protein. But when you really look, it may be 400 calories, right? So be sure that you're able to look at the serving size and the portion. Um, you guys already said this. Keep extras at work in your car, in your bag. That's great. Okay, so what if I don't plan? What happens if I did not make a plan or the plan fell through? I love this quote down here. Strive for progress, not 
perfection. So often I hear people say when they come in for a behaviorist visit with me, they'll give themselves a four on adherence in the questionnaire, right? And I'll say, what could you have done to give yourself a five? And that's often a very enlightening question because a lot of times they're like, oh, I'm never going to give myself a five. <laughs> or they may have an answer. And, and in that case, you know, that, that's understandable. But I want you to be able to give yourself a five on that adherence scale on the questionnaire to identify as perfect as making progress every single day. Um, changing our thought around what perfection looks like and what, what we're striving for. Okay. So have a plan when you don't plan. This is kind of um, ironic right here. So what I want you to do is have a backup to your plan. Have a backup to your backup to your plan. <laughs> so the more kind of things you can have in place in situations where you know you may struggle, like if you know a meeting may run over. Okay, so you have your first plan for what time it's supposed to be over. But let's say it's supposed to be over at a different time or it goes over. Well, what's your plan going to be if it goes over, right? What if you go to a ball game to watch your kid and then there's a rain delay? What's your backup plan? Okay. Have extra frozen meals at work and at home. This is another good way to think of portioned items. It's controlled. You know what it is. And it's convenient. So a lot of times our, our struggle can be convenient, right? And when we have this, let's say we had a plan for supper, but let's say we throw it in the crock pot, we run out the door for work, we come back in expecting the house to smell good, you know, and we come back in and it doesn't smell, and we look and we forgot to turn it on. So now not only is our supper not ready, but that particular meat and stuff is ruined because it's set out for eight hours in the house. So that's when we could pull out. Um, okay, we've got, I've got an extra frozen meal. I'm going to pull this out. This is what I'm going to have tonight and go on from there, okay? Another one is to have three chosen restaurants that you, your family, coworkers, whatever is kind of the biggest need for you, often go to. And then take those three restaurants and pick out one to two options from each. Um, I think one's enough. And and pick from those and know that, okay, when I go to restaurant A, this is, this is what I'm going to order. And that's just kind of set in stone for you, at least for right now. If I go to restaurant B, this is what I'm going to order. Restaurant C, this is what I'm going to order. And then let's say your friend at work says, hey, do you want to grab some lunch? What you can say is, sure, do you want A, B, or C? And then they get to decide um, yeah, let's go to B. Well, they say B, you know exactly what you're going to order that's going to be on plan. Okay. Um, let's keep on going. I love this last one. Give yourself grace. Okay. So a lot of times something happens, circumstance happens, um, our mood, our choices, and we make an off-plan choice. Right? When that happens, we can have some pretty unhelpful thinking that goes on, and that, that does not help us move forward towards our goal. When we think negative things, and not everybody does this, but a lot of people do struggle with unhelpful thoughts, especially when there's some off-plan choice. So if you have an off-plan choice, you don't plan ahead, or a plan doesn't follow through like you expect it to, give yourself some grace and then just keep going, okay? If you don't hear anything from this slide, hear that one. <laughs> Who feels that all that I've talked about, the prepping, the planning, the, the purchasing, all of that feels overwhelming to you? Who says they are a, um, like a fly by their seat of their pants person? Anybody feel really overwhelmed right now? Absolutely, yes. So this is up my wheelhouse because I loved having a plan. <laughs> Am I always successful? No, but remember, it's progress. But there are some people, one of my very best friends, she runs from plans. That's just not what she loves to do. So I know if I was talking to her about this, she would say, Jordan, no way. This frightens me. <laughs> okay, so you're not alone. So we'll go over some things that can be helpful. First of all, don't panic. <laughs> Some of you might be, but don't panic. 
And start small. Start somewhere. What is one thing that you can do? One of the things that we've talked about that you think would make the biggest impact in your plan. Okay? And then ask your family for help. Let's say those last minute going out to eat is really a struggle for you. So what can you do? You can say to your family, okay, I know we often go out to eat. Here are the three places that I'd like us to choose from. Because I know at these three places, this is the entree choice that I'm getting. That's within my plan. Okay? Don't try a new recipe every day of the week. So I've seen this, and I've even done this before, where you get so excited about some healthy recipes. And you print out five, you buy the ingredients, you come in, and you get all super excited and prepped, and then you make none of them, or you make two of them. So I would pick one recipe, if you're wanting to try new things, at most one recipe a week to try that's new. Because that's a lot of pressure to have all that newness and things like that in. So try one a week, okay? How do we get started from here? What do we do next? Um, hopefully those of you that feel overwhelmed feel a little bit better. So some go-to items that you need. Um, let's see, go-to items I think that is helpful is a scale, measuring cups, Ziploc bags, permanent marker to write on the Ziploc bag. Um, what else? Oh, containers to go ahead and pre-portion your food. So let's say... Um, you went ahead and baked chicken and roasted broccoli for lunch for the week. So go ahead and once it's cooked, put a piece of, uh, weigh your chicken and put your three, four, five, whatever ounce chicken you're supposed to be having in, in a container and then put your one cup of your cooked vegetables in the other side of the container and make five of those for the week. Make three. Go ahead and have them prepared so you can pull them out. So those are some go-to items. Start small. And ask your providers for tips. So anytime you come in here, you can ask any one of us, right? It doesn't have to be the dietitian. It doesn't have to be the behaviorist. There are, we each have our own individual and personal needs and different families and, and, and lifestyles that have allowed us to have some different tips that, that help us with the same things we're trying to, to help you with. Okay. You want me to log that? Yeah. Lots of times people have no interest in logging or don't understand how there's time for it or what's the importance of it or don't plan out want to log it, right? Um, if you're using my fitness pal, um, a couple tips is to pre-log your food for the day. I love this plan. So because, because if you pre-log your food, it does a couple things. It helps to make sure you have a plan for the next day. And... Um, it helps you follow through with a plan that you've developed. So if you pre-log while you're meal prepping, you're already kind of invested in that time. There's going to be downtime while you're waiting for things to cook. Go ahead and milk and pre-log. If you know you're going to have a shake every morning for breakfast, put it in there, right? If you know that for lunch on Monday and Wednesday you're going to have that chicken and roasted broccoli we just talked about, put it in there. Use the recipe function. Has anybody ever used the recipe um, builder function thing on the MyFitnessPal? Oh, good. Good, good, good. I love this thing. So in case you haven't, we'll walk through it. Okay. So what you're going to do is you can go to these screens, right? And so you're going to first go in and you're going to click. I'm pointing to the screen like you guys can see it. I wonder if you can... Ooh, pointer. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so right here you're going to click on um, meals, recipes, and foods. And that's going to pull you up into this screen. You guys can see some things that I had put in here. And then create a recipe. And then you're going to enter the title. And go ahead and enter servings. Um, and I do not click the next bulk import. So then from here, you're going to click the arrow for next, okay? And I see somebody said they write yours. That's okay. Um, you can calculate it any way that you like. Um, this is a good process to do whether you're hand calculating it or calculating it. Okay, let me get my pointer off now. <laughs> um, 
So any questions about my fitness pal or the my recipe function right now? No questions. Good. Good. I'm going to pull up the last slide, and I know it's only about 1230, but I want us to have a lot of time for questions and answers and be able to do that. So we're going to spend the next little bit here. Um, I've got some quotes here. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So, yes, we all have heard that quote, or at least most people have. But I want to challenge you to be able to say, if you fail to plan, you are planning to make things a little bit more challenging, <laughs> not necessarily to fail, right? Because just because we, we have a mishap and we're not able to plan ahead or the plan doesn't work like we expect, it doesn't mean we have failed. It means that we just need to start again, okay? Planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. That's probably my favorite um, because I, I love that. So we have control over the future as long as we plan ahead and, and can kind of guesstimate what it's going to look like to the best of our ability. And then lastly, you can spend your whole life planning, but once you're ready, get out there and start doing it. So no matter how many times you fill out that three P's sheet, the plan prepare or plan purchase and prepare, if we don't follow through and actually do what's on the sheet, it's still going to be extremely challenging, right? Because we're not going to have it done. So let's um, let's take some time now for those of you that have the ability to do the chat function. What is one thing that you're going to do between now and next week to help plan ahead? Um, whether it's using the three P's or one of the tips that we've talked about here. Planning. What are you going to be planning? Be specific. Are you going to plan supper? Are you going to plan, oh, try the red pepper chicken recipe. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention that. Thank you. The red pepper chicken recipe is one of the freezer meals that I have done. It's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit spicy, but it's, it's super good. Um, it's fine by itself. Okay, so we're going to be planning supper and prepping on Sunday. Good. Pre-planning for a two-week work trip. That's great. Um, recipe and really thinking about when I'm going to be stuck and probably not want to prepare now. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Friday nights are a terrible night for me to not want to prepare a meal. I don't want to. My husband doesn't want to. <laughs> but that's a night to have leftovers or to have a planned, healthy um, night out at a restaurant where you pre-planned what you've had, right? Um, menus for go-to restaurants. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love these. Good. Um, so a couple of things to go over, and we're going to end a little bit early today, is that we, um, we do purple points for everybody that attends the group. So when you... Um, when, you, when I finish and end the meeting today, you'll get redirected to a link and you'll fill that out and be able to kind of give us some feedback on the group, the information, and other topics. And from there, we will get your name together and be able to give that to the nutrition shop so they'll have uh, a Perka Point ready for you to get. If you don't know what Perka Points are, stop by the nutrition shop or ask your provider next time because they're pretty awesome. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know, and I may have to get my notes out, but we're going to be having a really cool guest speaker come on August 29th to the virtual group and August, I guess, then the 31st for the Thursday night group at 530 will be the same topic. Um, and it's really about healthy choices with a family. So um, Brenner Fit is going to be coming to the virtual group and going to be kind of guest speaker leading with Dr. Graves as well and talking about about how to kind of move forward with that with a healthy family. Um, so I really encourage you to try and make that virtual group on the 29th. Um, and I'm looking down here, helpful to have a chosen menu item for places to eat with a family, office staff, or friends. Yeah, that's great. So um, any other questions before we sign off for today's Tuesday virtual group? Awesome. Thank you, guys. If you would like a copy of the three P's, um, thank you. Um, if you'd like a copy of the three P's, 
um, shoot me an email, jharold at wakehealth.edu. So J H A, actually, I'll type it in, that might be easier. Um, and I'll just um, forward you back um, the PDF or the Word document of the three Ps. That way you can have that. And we'll also try and upload it on the virtual handouts too. So I um, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And I'll talk to you soon.